Are you craving the unmistakable taste of Chicago's world-famous deep dish pizza? Join me, Tara the Foodie, in this culinary adventure as I guide you through the art of making the perfect Chicago-style deep dish pizza right in the comfort of your own kitchen. Hi, I'm Tara the Foodie and I take the mystery out of cooking for you. From layering premium cheeses and savory toppings to ladling rich tomato sauce, I've got all the tips and tricks you need to replicate that iconic Chicago pizza experience. Now let's get cooking. We interrupt this program for an on-the-spot news report. Hey guys, just a quick interruption. Our friend, Austin Hamilton, he is an amazing musician, and he just released a video that I would love for you guys to check out. And I'm gonna be premiering that video here at the end of this video. So make sure you watch until the end. And you'll notice that I'm playing Austin's music throughout this entire video. So you can get some tastes as you enjoy watching me make this deep dish pizza. Now I gotta get back to editing. Well, no, no. So the first thing that you want to do to get this crust started for my Chicago style deep dish pizza made here in Northeast Ohio <laughs> is we need to get the yeast water going. So the first thing we're going to do is add one and a half teaspoons of yeast, dry active yeast, to one cup of tepid water about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or so. And then to feed the yeast, you always wanna give it a little bit of sugar. And then just take a spoon and just mix it all up to combine. It basically gets together and starts to dance and jig and you know get all funky. So you can already see the yeast kind of floating on top and joining its partners. <laughs> so it is going to munch on that sugar. For the next 10 minutes, just kind of make a sort of a foam on the top of this cup of water. And that's why I like to use dry active yeast rather than the instant yeast. I know that it could be faster to use instant yeast and it probably works most times. But in my mind, there's always those times that maybe it won't. And when you use dry active yeast, adding it to water, feeding it with a little sugar, it will tell you if it's gonna work. And it just told us by blooming up and foaming up in the water that it's alive and ready to go. It's dough time. <laughs> oh yeah. And now, if you remember from my amazing and very, very popular video, how to make Pizza Hut Pam Pizza at home, that I will absolutely link right here for you to check out after this, we introduced dough time. And now, that's what it is. It's dough time. It's dough time. It's dough time. Come on, pitch it to me. Do not hit the camera. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. Jesus. <laughs> That's a hit. Okay, it's definitely dough time. We it's are gonna, dough time. We're tearing shit up in the Tear the Foodie kitchen today. We're gonna gather ourselves together now and make this dough. So first thing we're gonna do to make our dough is we're gonna add our flour. And in this bowl, I have 375 grams or around three cups of just all purpose flour is fine. Or if you have bread flour, that would be great too. So we're gonna go ahead and add this flour to our bowl. Next, you wanna add two teaspoons of kosher salt. Now I'm gonna add about 40 grams or about three tablespoons of butter. And this butter is like room temperature, soft enough to easily combine with the flour and salt. Now I'm gonna mix this mixture up just until the butter is nicely combined with the flour and salt. Take my car cause I ain't too much believing you can keep that job for the help with the grieving All I'm asking is you call me when you get where you're going And don't be too quick to cover your tracks so well You can see that the butter is now just kind of like little peas Just little particles throughout the flour and that's what you're looking for And at that point we're ready to add our yeast water So 
as you can see, the dough is a bit sticky, so I'm going to add just a little bit of flour, just kind of pinches of the flour, just so that it loosens it up a bit. Fall off the axle, run my mind far away from the hassle, so did you see how it kind of came back away from the paddle? And now we've got a soft mixture. It feels a little sticky, but not enough where it's sticking to my hand or sticking to the paddle. So with a Chicago style deep dish pizza, what separates that pizza from other pizzas is the crust. The crust is different. It's buttery, it's crispy, it's thicker. You don't want it to have that chew, that give when you're biting into it like other styles of pizza. This is more a flaky, buttery, crispy crust that we're going for to create our Chicago style deep dish. So don't overwork your dough. So because our dough has now come together, we can go ahead and stop working it and take it out of this bowl. Get yourself a big bowl and you want to get yourself some olive oil or oil of your choice because we want to grease the bowl and get it ready for the dough ball. So I'm going to go ahead and drizzle in a little bit of oil and then just take like a brush, rub the oil all around the bowl. Always have a little extra flour next to you anytime you need to kind of, you know, take some into your hands so that your hands are nice and dry. Now I'm going to grab this dough out of the bowl gather it up in my hands. You want to work it just enough, pulling it away from the center just to turn it into a ball. And it doesn't take long to create a perfect little dough ball. Now take this ball and place it into your oiled bowl. And we're looking for this dough to double in size. To do that, we need to cover the bowl and leave it in a warm place, which is basically in your house because your house is warm for the most part, and let it rise for about an hour or until you see that it's about double the size. Next, it's time to make our sauce. <laughs> he won't wear slippers like me. I, I've been wearing slippers, I think, my whole life. What's wrong my, with these my, are my socks? These are my new slippers What's that I got for my, Christmas. What's wrong with my Christmas socks, babe? Nothing. You, I'm glad you're wearing something to keep your feet cozy and warm. Mm. <laughs> are we ready to make some sauce? We're ready to make some sauce, babe. Okay. So I have a pot here that's over medium, medium high heat. And the first thing you want to do is add three and a half tablespoons or so of butter. And to that butter, I'm going to add a small onion finely chopped and five cloves of minced garlic. This ain't going to fit in there, so I'm just going to use my finger. <laughs> and go ahead and stir this up. I'm going to turn, this is kind of a crazy ass burner. <laughs> you know how you have like a big burner on your stove and this is the big one. So let me turn it down to a proper medium heat. And you're gonna let this go for a few minutes and then we will add our tomato products. All right, so after about five, six minutes, the onions are nice and tender, translucent, and there's a little bit of browning going on in here as well. This is when you wanna add the different tomato products. So I'm gonna add 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Try not to get it all over me. Next, I'm going to add 28 ounces of whole tomatoes, and these are San Marzano tomatoes. They're like the best tomatoes for pizza sauce. Carefully add these to your pot because they're going to splash everywhere. Good job, good job, good job. <laughs> and then get yourself a little can of tomato paste, and I'm going to add about four tablespoons of tomato paste to the pot. Probably more than two. <laughs> it might just be the whole can. I don't know. I'm going to decide right. Yeah, I'm going to add the whole can. I'm adding the whole can. <laughs> now I'm going to start stirring with this wood spoon. But as we know, we've got huge whole tomatoes in this sauce right now. We don't want that. We want to go ahead and crush them down as well, but we don't want to just have them completely crushed like you have in the crushed canned tomatoes. You're buying the whole tomatoes as well because we're gonna smash them down 
but just enough to where they're smashed, but there's still some texture. That's gonna create a sauce that has delicious chunks of tomato throughout. So I'm gonna grab a good old potato masher and carefully mash up these tomatoes. So now's the time that you wanna add the seasonings to your sauce. So first we're gonna add two and a quarter teaspoons kosher salt. Next, add two tablespoons sugar, one teaspoon dried oregano, one and a half teaspoons dried basil, and one and a half teaspoons red pepper flake. And then stir it up. Oh, and it's starting to look like pizza sauce. So now we wanna make sure it's on like a medium low heat, enough to simmer this sauce. It'll just be a little bubble. And you wanna simmer this sauce, stirring occasionally, until it thickens up. All right, so now it's time to get our cast iron pan ready. I have a 12 inch coated cast iron pan here. It's like a roaster pan, <laughs> but it's perfect for this application. You wanna get yourself a 12 inch cake pan, a 12 inch cast iron pan, something like that. A heavy bottom, high side type of pan. So the first thing you wanna do is really oil it well because this pizza is gonna be in here. The dough is going to be pressed up against the sides. It's going to be baking for 45 minutes. We want to be pretty confident that it is going to come out of this pan when it comes out of the oven. So I'm going to take some light olive oil and just drizzle it all over the bottom of this pan generously and then take some sort of brush and just make sure that every single inch of this pan is well, well oiled. So I'm gonna put this to the side and it is time to take our dough out of the bowl. So before I do that, I'm gonna take my extra flour here and I'm going to flour my cutting board just lightly so that the dough doesn't stick to the cutting board. And I'm also going to flour my rolling pin. This is, <laughs> this is a vintage rolling pin, I think. It has been through a lot. It has seen a lot. <laughs> so get that nice and floured as well. And so as you can see, this dough ball has almost doubled in size. This is about what you're looking for. Nice and poofed up. And you want to punch it down, basically just release the gases from the dough. And we're gonna pull it out of the bowl and onto the cutting board. So we're working with a 12 inch pan, but we want the dough to not only cover the bottom of the pan, but go up the sides. So we want to roll our dough out to about a 14 inch round piece of dough. And it is rolling out very easily. It's a nice, soft, pliable dough. And just kind of keep going along all the different edges as you roll it out. You want it about a quarter inch thick or so. Does that look like it's about 14 inches, hon? Yep. Okay. So then you want to pull up your dough and kind of like fold it over. And that way you're gonna be able to pick it up and place it into your pan more easily. Give it another swipe. Like make sure all the oil is nice and even. Okay, I'm gonna bring my pan over here. I'm gonna lay it on the edge or go to about the middle there, right? And then open it back up <laughs> and try desperately to do this without messing it up. And now you just want to press the dough down into the pan and then up the sides. Be too fast. Still not have time to cover my tracks on. It's looking right. good. You think? Oh yeah. Okay. All right, so that's what it should look like in your pan. And now is the fun part. Now we get to assemble our Chicago style deep dish pizza. So you want to grab your sliced mozzarella and your sliced provolone. I'm gonna start with the mozzarella and you're just gonna lay the cheese down and overlap as you go. You wanna cover the bottom of this big old pizza pie. I mean, this is gonna be nice and cheesy. That is a lot of cheese. Yes, and we're not done. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the provolone. 
you want to have a good amount of cheese in this because this is a deep dish, ooey gooey pizza that you're going to eat like a piece of pie. It is not a diet item. This is not a low carb recipe. This is not, this is something that you just enjoy. Not keto. Once in a while. No, it is not. <laughs> I'll take that one of those pieces right now. What do you off. want? You want some Pete, some oh, cheese, baby? Let me get that provolone. <laughs> oh. oh, you gotta feed the cameraman or he'll just stop working. <laughs> the next layer is a lot of Italian sausage. So this happens to be a pound of Italian sausage. We're gonna use as much as it's gonna take to cover the bottom. And this is raw. It will cook in the oven because this is gonna bake for quite a while. So just kind of flatten it out into like patties and then place it down into the pizza. Make it easier on yourself to cover the bottom of this pizza. For me, this is uh, kind of a tip of the hat to Gino's East Pizza. It's probably the most iconic pizza place in Chicago, at least it's my favorite. Gino's East really did this huge like disc of sausage in their pizza like this. So, and I just, every bite is just like a layer of sausage. It's so, so good. So I had to definitely do a layer of sausage like Gino's East. Now it's time to add some of our sauce and I'm going to need a ladle. Nessie. Oh, <laughs> you want to use Nessie? Yeah, bring Nessie okay. over here. <laughs> we see. will debut Nessie on the show today. Look how cute. Yeah, cute she is. He's, oh, it's a, oh, it's a she. Uh, oh, Nessie? It could be a she. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Nessie is always over on our side counter with our salt and garlic and all that good stuff that sits out all the time. And she is our soup ladle. So she is gonna go ahead and co-star in this video today. <laughs> our sauce has reduced down, so it's a thicker, chunkier sauce, and that's what you want. We wanna put a thin layer, but a layer that covers the pizza entirely. So we'll put a few ladles down and then spread it around and see if we need some more. And I'll just let Nessie hang out there in the sauce. <laughs> and I'll grab my flat spoon and just sort of spread it around. Again, you just want a thin layer that covers everything all the way to your dough. And that definitely does. Three Nessies and you're good to go. Get yourself a Nessie. I'll make, hey, Nessie. <laughs> I'll make sure I put a link to Nessie if you want to order one of her on my Shop My Favorite Things portion of my website. And I will put a link here so that you can get to that. So three more toppings. This is where you put the toppings that you want to put on your Chicago style deep dish pizza. If you want just pepperoni, go ahead with that. You wanna add some mushrooms, some green pepper. Now's the time to go ahead and put those type of toppings on your pizza. So I am a pepperoni girl or AKA meat chip girl through and through. So I am going to be covering the top of this pizza generously with pepperoni. Crawl through the door of the town liquor store, drown a bottle of tequila and fall to the floor. Wonder when my liver will rot to the core. Oh well. Oh, yeah. mm. <laughs> if you don't snack on meat chips when they're sitting next to you, I don't I don't know what kind of person you are. You're not like me. Oh. At this point you should have already been preheating your oven. <laughs> But if you haven't, stop and put your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit so that it is ready to accept this pizza very shortly. Thank you for your service. <laughs> we have two more toppings to add. So we're going to add some green pepper, just kind of scattered about, not a ton of them, but enough to have that earthy kind of wonderful flavor that a green pepper gives to a pizza. And the final ingredient that you want to add is a dusting of very finely grated Parmesan cheese. Moment of truth, it is time to put this mammoth, <laughs> 
Chicago style deep dish pizza into our 425 degree oven and it will bake in there for about 45 minutes. And it is heavy, by the way. This fucker is heavy. <laughs> and then try not to throw out your back when you put this into the oven. Oh my goodness. All right, we will see you in 45 minutes, you beautiful, beautiful pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay the pizza is out of the oven as you can see it was in the oven 425 degrees 45 minutes and it is nice and crunchy on the outside the reason that i just got it out of the cast iron pan as I did immediately is because cast iron keeps its heat for a while. The pizza would have continued to cook. You want to get it out of your hot pan onto a cutting board, a rack, something like that so that it can cool and let it set for like 10 minutes or so. So it begins to solidify a bit and then you'll be able to cut into it and serve a piece without it kind of falling all apart and everything. But while we're waiting for this to cool, let's find out how much this damn thing weighs. Four pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. That's, I actually thought it was gonna be more. <laughs> it looks like a lot more than four pounds. Yeah, four, but almost five pounds, it looks more. It looks like a 25 pound plate. <laughs> I know. So now I'm gonna let this Chicago style deep dish pizza rest for about 10, 15 minutes, just so that everything settles in. It cools down in temperature quite a bit. And then it'll be time to cut into this, to pull out a piece. And then I will have probably one of the best times to taste I have ever had on this show. Ooh, is right. First time around there, Tara the foodie, oh. making this Chicago style deep dish pizza. I know. You've been more nervous than usual. Yeah. Fully. Look, I am a little Northeast Ohio girl here and I have had several Chicago deep dish pizzas and I've enjoyed them and I love them and I want to do them justice with my version. So I very badly want this to have a nice presentation. <laughs> I want it to cut nicely. I want it to taste good. So yeah, I admit I am a little nervous, but I am confident that this will be delicious because everything I make is delicious. So, <laughs> but so far I am feeling really good about this pizza and it's my favorite time of every video. Time to taste. Ooh, and I'm so excited. I think I'm the most excited ever to taste this creation okay so that's the middle i'm gonna start here and just kind of press down keep that job for the help with the breathing all the masking is you call me when you get where you're going and don't be too quick to cover your tracks so well but we've got some wonderful steam <laughs> coming off of this pizza you can see the sausage, green pepper, the cheese, the layer of sauce, pepperoni. Oh, and the juiciness, just, oh my gosh. I mean, it looks great. Okay, I'm ready to eat pizza <laughs> with a knife and fork. Us folks here in Northeast Ohio don't usually use a knife and fork to eat pizza, but this is the occasion where you should. So I am going in. Take that pepperoni and put it right there. <laughs> well, gentlemen. I could cry. <laughs> For this being the first time that I have made a Chicago deep dish pizza, I was nervous, but you know what? I knew it was gonna work out. I have your support 
you're out there rooting me on. I know that. And that's why this worked. And it is delicious. <laughs> it is so delicious. The sauce tastes like I cooked it slowly for like eight hours. It has such a flavor because I did cook it down for probably a good 30 minutes. And then when it goes into the oven and it's sitting on top of the sausage and the cheese and it's slow cooking in there for 45 minutes, you get one hell of a flavor. And then you've got your sausage, your cheese, your pepperoni that I love, the crunchiness, the, the sturdiness of the crust. It has everything that you want to have in a Chicago style deep dish pizza. So I have to say, I have done it again, you guys. Just like I showed you how to make a Pizza Hut pan pizza at home, I have just nailed it again and shown you how to make a Chicago style deep dish pizza at home as well. So you are just in pizza heaven at this point. I cannot wait for you guys to try it. Let me know what you think. You're teasing me over here with this thing the whole time. <laughs> I, had to keep a, I had to keep a towel with me just to wipe up all the saliva. <laughs> he must be fed. I must be fed. I gotta oh, have him. Nah. He's going to tear into this <sighs> like you have never seen. I took a nice princess bite, and this is uh, not going to be a princess. Oh, maybe it is going to be a princess yeah, bite. Yeah, I just... We're on camera still. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I got a white shirt on, too. Yeah, I know. We I mean, look. We went, we, we went all out today. I, yeah. Fresh threads. I went shopping mm. and decided to wear a cream colored shirt. <laughs> and not get sauce on it. Mm. Everything is right there. <laughs> There's, n how can you do anything better than this in life? <laughs> Fantastic. Mm. Game changer right here. Mm. <laughs> Make it today. First time ever in this kitchen with this. <laughs> Send me pictures. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Tara the Foodie. Find me and send me the photos of your beautiful Chicago style deep dish creations. And share this video with your friends. Post it everywhere because everybody's got to know how to make this pizza in their own kitchen. I'm Tara the Foodie, taking the mystery out of cooking for you, and I will see you next time. You said, I'll take my cock, I ain't too much for leaving. You can keep that job for the help with the grieving. All I'm asking is you call me when you get where you're going. And don't be too quick to cover your tracks so well. Where the ocean turns to liquor, we can settle the score, oh.
there, say, looking to beg you for a favor. You can take my car and I will pay the rest of labor. Sail down the coast until I breach the border. Leave my worries at the quarter. Goodbye, I'll see you later. Oh, well. Oh, well. Said, looking to beg you for a favor You can take my car And I will pay the rest in labor Sail down the coast Until I reach the border Leave my worries at the corner Goodbye, I'll see you later oh, well.